Let me show you how to improve your images using something simple like selective exposure adjustments in Lightroom. As always, feel free to follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file following the link in the description of this video. And now let's get right into it. For this video, we are going to work with an HDR file in order to get out all the details from the highlights in the sky and the shadows in the landscape in the foreground. So the first step in the editing process is always to get the base exposure right. This sunset is already looking good, but we can improve the light situation. So first up, let's change the profile to Adobe Landscape, just to slightly bump up those shadows and also introduce some more saturation to this image. Then we want to work our way through the tone panel. The very first thing which quite dramatically improves everything is to bring up the exposure. And since we're working with an HDR file, we can safely bring it up quite a bit. And in turn, we will get a lot more details out of those shadows. Of course, increasing the exposure like this will blow out the sky completely right there. Again, we are using an HDR file, so that's not a big deal. We just need to bring down the highlights just to a point where the sky isn't blown out anymore, right about here maybe. Of course, you can also use the histogram as an indicator of where your exposure lies. So the bright areas do look quite good, but we can get some more details out of the shadows. Simply raise the shadows a bit, making them slightly brighter. And I'm also going to increase the blacks. Right about here looks very, very good. So by making use of the huge dynamic range of the raw file and those tone adjustments, we went from the basic image on the left to the edited version on the right. It is looking much more balanced exposure wise. You can see there is no over or under exposure. So that is great. Also, the colors do look a little more intense, which always looks good on those sunrise shots. As someone just starting out with editing, this would be a great image. However, we can improve this further by making use of the previously mentioned selective exposure adjustments. This is something Ansel Adams even did back in the darkroom days on his images. What I mean by that is we want to further darken or brighten up the image in certain parts in order to create more depth and make the image more interesting this way. We cannot do this using global adjustments like right here in the basic panel with the tone adjustments. Instead, we want to use masking for this effect. Now, before we start getting into that, let's real quick change the white balance. I do want to bring the temperature slightly down. So this way we can keep some of those blue color tones at the top of the sky, which I quite like for this scene. And we can also bring up the tint, which in turn just makes these sunrise colors more intense. Let's also bring up the texture to make this image look a bit more crisp. And then I'm going to bring down the clarity and the dehaze to add some kind of autumn glow effect on top. And now let's also raise the vibrance slightly before we can head into the masking panel. And here is where the magic will happen. Starting with an edited image like this, you want to visualize where you can change certain things to make the image look better. In this case, right here in the center is the brightest part of the image. It would not make sense to make this area darker. Instead, we want to bring up the contrast right above it. And thus we can make the, those warmer clouds pop out against the blue of the sky in the background. So let's start working on the sky. I'm going to use a simple linear gradient and I'm trying to cover most of it until I reach this bright point right here. Of course, I only want to target the sky and not the trees in the foreground. So we want to mask them out. We can simply do that by hitting those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose select sky. This will give us a perfect mask. And as I said, I want those brighter clouds to send out a little more from the dark background. This in turn means we need to make the background darker. And since this consists mostly of shadows and darker tones, we can bring down the shadows and thus create the exact effect we want. To further improve this effect, we can bring down the blacks and you will immediately see how this makes the clouds pop. Wonderful. I do think we can even bring up the contrast up here. 
getting some real dramatic clouds this way. Due to those adjustments, you also can see the sky up there is getting a little too saturated. So that's not what we want. Let's bring down the saturation a notch, preventing that. And I also want to bring down the temperature a little bit, introducing some more blue tones right up here. And I'm also going to bring down the tint slightly since it's a little too purple-ish up here. Wonderful. That looks great. So let me deactivate this mask to see the before and after result. This is the image without this single mask. And here we added one on top of the sky. This already makes a huge difference on the overall look, but we can improve things further. So let's create another linear gradient. Using this one, I really only want to target the very top part of the image. Something like this looks pretty good. And in here, I'm going to only slightly bring down the exposure. Just a little bit to add a little more contrast up here. Again, let me deactivate the mask to see the difference from before to after. And this way, we want to work our way very, very carefully through the image to add more depth to the image. So let's also work on the foreground. Again, we can make use of a simple linear gradient covering most of the darker areas of the foreground like this. If I would bring down the exposure here, I would risk some white, ugly looking underexposure. That's not what I want. So instead of dropping the exposure, I'm going to drop the whites, which will only target the brightest area of the foreground. So I can safely drop them all the way, introducing more darkness to the very near foreground without risking underexposure. Again, I'm deactivating the mask to see the difference from before to after. So with the top and the bottom part darkened, we are kind of leading the viewer's eye right in the center where we want it to be. What I don't like about this mask at the moment is the boardwalk right here in the center is getting a little too dark as well. So I want to say subtract and choose a brush and carefully brush a little bit away from this linear gradient to keep a little more detail right here because this is the subject of the image. Now let's also work on the center. For this I want to use the radial gradient because with the radial gradient I can nicely cover the whole width of the image like this as you can see. And what I want to do here is to add some more punch to it. I can do that by bringing up the contrast but at the same time, I do want to bring up the blacks, which will kind of add some nice looking glow to this area. And I also want to bring up the saturation, making this part more colorful. And while we're adjusting the colors, let's also bring up the temperature. This will give us a very nice mixture of those warmer tones in the center with those bluer tones towards the edges of the image. I do think I can also bring up the tint slightly. Then I want to create another radial gradient covering pretty much the water part of the image right here. What I want to do here is to also create some more punch and I'm doing this by adding clarity. This increased clarity works especially well with the surface of the water and those clouds reflecting in the water. One more area of the image which is lacking at the moment and which we want to adjust are those trees on the right side. I think they could use more color, but more importantly, also more exposure. So I'm going to use another radial gradient to cover most of them. I only want to affect the trees, so we need to subtract the sky from this mask. Click the subtract button and simply choose select sky. Now this is looking pretty good. I do think I want to bring this radial gradient slightly up and in here, since I want to target a specific color tone, I'm going to the point color tool, click in here, pick up the eyedropper, and I want to target this autumn color tone right here. This way we are getting a nice selection. First off, I want to bring up the luminance to make the area brighter. I also want to bring up the saturation, giving it some more color. And we can play around with the hue, giving them more of a red color tone like that. Okay. However, that's not all that we can do. We can also use some increased whites, adding contrast. 
and thus also more exposure to this area. Okay, I think I also want to bring up the highlights and maybe even some contrast. Now the reason for me to not bring up the exposure in general for this area is increasing the exposure would make everything brighter. But I only want to target the brighter parts of this area. So we want to bring up highlights and whites which are targeting them. Again, let me deactivate the mask to see the before and after comparison. Looks so much better. All right, and I think that's it for the masking aspect of this image. Let me deactivate all the masks. So we started with this base edit, which at first looked pretty good, but using just a bit of masking, we ended up with this, which looks so, so much better. Now we can also do a little bit of color grading to finish this image. Let me go into the color mixer tab for that. And I want to start with the hue. Currently, what I don't like is the blue tone of the sky. It's a little too purple for my taste, so I'm going to bring down the purple hue. And in turn, it makes the blue tones look a little more like a natural blue tone. I'm also going to bring down the blue tones. Then we want to work a little bit on the saturation aspect. I am going to bring up most of the color tones here. So let's start with red. Also going to bring up orange. I do want to bring down the yellow tones because they are a little bit too much in this image. Then let's bring up green. And I'm going to drop the blue saturation slightly because it is a bit overwhelming at the moment. Okay, right here in the color mixer, we can do some more selective adjustments in the luminance tab. And here we simply can target the blue luminance, bringing it further to the left and thus making the blue tones in the top and bottom area darker. Perfect. Finally, I do also want to apply some split toning. So let's head into the color grading panel. Let's start with the highlights. And of course, working with a shot like this, we want to have warm highlights. So first set up the hue to something warm. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a notch, just making those colors a little more intense. I'm also going to adjust the midtones. I don't want to add something warm to the midtones. Instead, let's go with a cold color tone, somewhere in the blue range, and slightly bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now, the last thing we can do is some calibration adjustments. So, here I want to bring down the blue primary hue and raise the saturation. All right, that's it. Finally, the sharpening in the details tab. I'm always using the same settings here. I'm bringing down the radius, I'm increasing the details. Hold down the alt key while increasing the masking slider and increase the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the finished image. So I hope I was able to make you see using selective exposure adjustments is very, very important to make your images stand out and look more professional. If you have any questions about the editing or if you want to add anything yourself, feel free to write a comment for this video and thank you so much for watching it.